So the story beginning, um, of course, you know, as a refugee. Um, and so we're going to be talking in Joshua 20. There, this is a pretty good article. Uh, and this guy really goes into the city of refuge and how the correlation really is the um, salvation and how we can come to Christ uh, and have salvation and that being our refuge. Um, but so let's go ahead and just read. Um, this is supposed to, supposed to be two sessions, really, <laughs> A and B. Uh, we got uh, nine verses to cover. Um, so I, I really have to kind of make it stretch, I guess you would call it, so I can come back next week. Otherwise, we'll be playing bingo, right? And so, but we'll go ahead. God has a plan for all of us anyway. So we're going to go ahead. So in uh, chapter 20, verse 1, and we'll go ahead and read that. The Lord also spoke to Joshua, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, Appoint for yourselves cities of refuge, of which I spoke to you through Moses, that the slayer who kills a person accidentally or intentionally may flee there, and they shall be your refuge from the avenger of blood. And when he flees to one of those cities and stands at the entrance of the gate of the city, and declares his case in the hearing of the elders of that city, they shall, they shall take him into the city as one of them and give him a place that he may dwell among them. Then if the avenger of blood pursues him, they shall not deliver the slayer into his hand because he s struck his neighbor unintentionally, but did not hate him beforehand. And he shall dwell in that city until he stands before the congregation for judgment and until the death of the one who is high priest in those days. Then the slayer may return and come to his own city and his own house to the city from which he fled. So they appointed Kadesh in Galilee in the mountains of Natali, Shechem and in the mountains of Ephraim. And Kirjath Arba, uh, which is Hebron, in the mountains of Judah. And on the other side of the Jordan, by Jericho eastward, they assigned Bezar in the wilderness on the plain from the tribe of Reuben, Ramoth and Gilead from the tribe of Gad, and Golan and Enbashan from the tribe of Manasseh. These were the cities appointed for all the children of Israel, and for the stranger who dwelt among them, that whoever killed a person accidentally might flee there and, and, and not die by the hand of the avenger of blood until he stood before the congregation. So that's mentioned two or three times. I had a um, PowerPoint, but I didn't, we don't have a, um, an adapter. So one of the reference points here for this beginning of this chapter is Deuteronomy 4 and 43. And, it, and it's also mentioned in this article that Bezar in the wilderness of the plateau for the Ruinites, Ramoth and Gilead for the Gadites, and Golan and Bashan for the Mazanites. And so um, <clears throat> in Deuteronomy 44, 43, this, um, if I, I, the key word here being the Mazanites for me, uh, tells me that this is on the east side of the river or the east side of the Jordan, and that this was with the, uh, the tribes that fought with the children of Israel uh, to capture the land of Canaan and then moved back. And so then and in Joshua 27, 8, it talks about, so they appointed Kiddush in, in Galilee, in the mountains of Natali, Shechem in the mountains of Ephraim, and Kirjath Arba, which is Hebron, in the mountains of Judah. So this will be on the west side of the Jordan. And, uh, of course, Kirjath Arba would be where um, Caleb uh, has designated, was designated his piece of property. And then in Numbers 35 and 12, it says, They shall be unto you cities of refuge from the avenger, that the manslayer die not until he stands before the congregation in judgment. So the point that I'm basically we're talking about here is that this was already pre-planned. This wasn't anything that... Um, 
God just all of a sudden came up with. Um, the children of Israel delayed, basically, um, God's pre-planned uh, cities that were already laid out. And so now we're being told in Joshua that this is now finally happening. And so, again, these, these cities were set up that uh, they would have some place to go uh, for refuge. Uh, because remember, in the old times, before this actual, actually was set up, was that, you know, it was, um, I think I heard the word or read the word primitive, that it was lawful for you to avenge the death of um, your relative. Now, I think Pastor David had a post on Facebook here not too long ago. Um, he, he was given some scriptures for the word goel, uh, the kinsman redeemer. And so this would be the responsibility of the family member to seek out the blood of the person who killed his relative. Um, so basically the, um, the redeemer or the avenger. And so in Numbers 24 and 25, we have another reference that says, Then the congregation shall judge between the slayer and the revenger of blood according to these judgments. And the congregation shall deliver the slayer out of the hand of the revenger of blood. And the congregation shall restore him to the city of refuge, whether he, whether he was fled. And he shall abide in it until the death of the high priest, which was anointed with the holy oil. And of course, I mean, I could really get ahead of myself by um, talking about this scripture um, because there are a, a lot of key elements in here. Uh, one being that, um, first point being that he had to come to the gate first, right? Or she had to come to the gate first and then she had to explain herself or himself to the elders of the city. And then the elders of the city would then make the judgment whether or not the person was being truthful. Uh, there's another um, scripture in Psalms, uh, repentance of the heart. Um, you just can't call it lip service, so to speak. You have to really mean what you say. And then so the elders were then, um, I guess, prayerfully and discerning if the person was actually telling the truth. And if the person wasn't telling the truth, then it was their obligation to turn the person over to the avenger. A um, lot, of, lot, of, um, lot of connections there. Uh, we'll get into probably in the next session where, you know, we come to Christ and, you know, um, the enemy is always after us. You know, um, as I was driving here, it reminded me that, you know, the enemy doesn't really care, like I think Pastor David says, and a lot of the pastors say from the pulpit, that you know, they, they, um, our sin is, you know, is, is pleasant for a moment. And, but, you know, the enemy doesn't really care whether or not you're enjoying yourself. He just wants you to enjoy yourself enough to keep doing it. So therefore, you will continue to follow him thinking you're doing the right thing, and then you end up dead or in death. And so, you know, we have to really be careful um, when we are seeking refuge uh, from God, right? And that our repentance or our request for forgiveness of sin is not really uh, a change of heart. It's not really something that we really mean. We just basically giving God lip service. And we know when we say those things that we aren't sincere. It's not that Someone has to come to us and say, hey, you know, you're not being sincere or if you're asking Christ for forgiveness today. You know, I know that if it's something you're really not sincere about not doing anymore, you, really, you know that you're not being sincere in your heart when you ask that prayer. So, you know, um, yes, we're talking about the city of these cities that were set aside. But we're also talking about repentance at the same time. Um, and it's easy to make that connection. Uh, there's a, there are a lot of scriptures here 
that would um, point us to that. And then so one of the things that came point jumped out to me was that it says, does our law judge a man before it hears him and knows what he is doing? So our, our other scripture in Proverbs 18 and 13 tells us, he who answers a matter before he hears it is foolish and, and it's a shame to him. So, you know, in today's society, right, you can't be judged before jury, or you can't be, can't be judged guilty before jury you stood before a jury, supposedly, right? Um, so we know a lot of people get thrown in jail innocent, but, but sticking with the scripture in Proverbs 18 and 13, it, was, it would have been foolish, as uh, Solomon writes, uh, if a matter is not heard before an answer is given. And so as elders of the church, all of us as men of the church, you know, when there's a brother or someone who comes, uh, as the Bible says here, um, a sojourner or a stranger comes to us, we have uh, benevolence, we offer benevolence here, um, sort of like a city of refuge. And if that person comes to us and asks, for help, you know, it would still be this art up to us to discern whether or not that person is actually being truthful or is he just providing lip service. And of course, you know, there are times when you really can't tell um, and you just follow uh, the leading of the Holy Spirit. I was thinking of, uh, not to get off topic, um, my friend, uh, uh, what was his name? Uh, I'm not going to say his name. We got the camera. But anyway, he was uh, here um, in the bridge house. And well, we met the guy. I'm trying to look around the room, see if anybody was here. We met the guy um, downtown. Um, and he needed a place to stay. Um, and uh, I was a new elder at the time. And, they, and I was there with them. And they asked me, they said, well, it takes an elder to give permission for us to let the person into the home. Um, I didn't know the guy, but uh, something told me that, you know, this was going to be a problem. You know, I said, I tried to shy away from the responsibility. And I, tried, you know, <laughs> I tried to say, you know, you know, being the old guy that I am, um, I just kind of knew that it was going to be an issue. I said, well, you know, I don't know why you're asking me. You know, go ask somebody else. You know, but the long story short, the guy seemed to be sincere, and the person who was batting for the person was really sincere. The person, the guy... He was, you know, a member of the church. He was really batting for the, batting for the guy. He was, you know, and, um, and the guy um, who was there really um, kind of turned the whole thing around and made it seem as if, as I was thinking this morning, the guy who really wanted him there wasn't me. The guy who really wanted him there was a guy that he turned on. Um, and, and I was kind of kind of caught in between that because I wanted to believe the guy who was visiting for some reason and not believe the guy who wanted him there. And I didn't, really, I didn't really think about that until, like I said, this morning. And immediately, you know, I had to really ask for forgiveness for that because, you know, I had um, 
in my heart turn my back against the guy who really had the back of the guy who really didn't want to be here. You know what I mean? It was kind of, everybody, everybody understand what I mean? Without saying any names. Um, and I guess what I'm saying is that, you know, I've had a long discussion with a guy at my job this week. You know, um, what I thought was true about a lot of things really aren't true, you know, about um, um, politics and racism. And, you know, we, we sat down, we had a conversation today. It was pretty good. I, and I, if you want to talk about with me later on about it, we can. But, um, kind of turn things around a little bit and kind of have a whole different perspective about things. I mean, I talked to Mike one time about some stuff and um, him and I had some, had some conversations too. But uh, it was kind of along those lines too. But you really don't know where people are from until you really sit down and talk to them um, and how, what, what they've been through, what they've seen and, and you know, those kinds of feelings, man. And um, so it was kind of one of those things. And, and so the guy from the bridge house was, you know, uh, was really on my mind today. I probably need to call him um, because I thought some things about him that weren't true. Um, and I didn't give him an opportunity to come to the city of refuge. You see what I'm saying? Because I had a preconceived con notion believing this other guy when I shouldn't have, right? Um, basically what I'm saying is that, you know, people play the race card all the time and it ain't always true, right? We all on the same page? Okay, all right. So you can't always, you can't always get caught up in that, man. And then so in Deuteronomy 19 and 3, another passage we have here, it says that uh, you shall prepare roads for yourself and divide into three parts the territory of your land, which the Lord your God is giving you to inherit, that any manslayer may flee there. And in verse 4, and this is the case of the manslayer who flees there, that he may live. Whoever kills his neighbor unintentionally, not having hated him in time past. So this was set up that if he came to you, and he, or if he had, there was an accident and he in, did not intentionally ha intend to harm the person that was there, then he had a place to come. And so the person would then be let into the city and then he would dwell in the city, just like the person that I'm talking about. And you let him into this city and he lived among us. And we shared with him everything that we had. But on the flip side of that, the person who comes into the city has the choice to make to either stay or leave, right? Um, and in this case, the Bible tells us that this person should stay there right? Should stay there. Why? Because it gives them the refuge from the enemy. Once you go outside that door, once you go outside of the covering of the Lord, you're asking for trouble. Now, I don't think any of us really needs to be a genius at this point. I'm looking around the room. I see guys been here a long time. <laughs> I don't think anybody needs to know or needs to be given a one-on-one -on -one lesson about walking outside of God's blessing if you need one. We got one, two, three, four, four elders in here, a couple of deacons, and a pastor who we'll all sit down with you and pray with you and pray that you don't do that. Um, it's a very tempting thing to try to walk with the enemy, but the end result is always death. Right at yeah, 20 minutes. And so in Psalms 9 and 9, the Lord will always be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in time of trouble, 
and those who know your name will put their trust in you. For you, Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. So we don't necessarily have to um, look hard to find a connection between Christ and, the, and this passage in the city of refuge um, and, that, and the correlation between those two. Again, Psalms 99 being one of those uh, correlating passages. And Isaiah says here, a man will be, will be a hiding place from the wind and a cover from the tempest as rivers of water in a dry place, as a shadow of a great rock in a weary land. Again, speaking of Christ, the Messiah. Then in Revelation 12, 10 and 11, it says, Now I heard a loud voice in heaven, now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren, who accused them before our God day and night, has, cast down, has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. So this is the chapter 11, or verse 11, saying that you know, Christ is our Savior, he is our refuge. And how, do we, how does he become our refuge? First, we know that we have to ask for forgiveness. And we have to come with a repentant heart, right? A change, or what's that word they use? A repentant heart. Um, now, I think somebody said here, too, that, you know, that a lot of times when you do come to Christ, maybe for the first time or however many times, you, know, you may not necessarily be sincere. Um, I, I, I'm not, I mean, you... Saying that it's not a big deal is probably a little stretch, but um, when I first came to Christ, and I, I think that I gave my life to him sincerely, um, but of course, there were times after I gave my life to Christ that you know, I went back to doing what I was doing. Uh, was I sincere about my request? To ask for forgiveness? I think so. Um, was I sincere about changing the way that I was living? Probably not. Um, because as I look back on it, I didn't really know what that meant. Um, and I always say that if you come to, maybe, maybe not the bridge, but if you come to a church that emphasizes the teaching of the Bible, then your life will be changed because the Bible, the words of God, is what's going to change you. You know, um, when I was claimed that I was saved, you know, I was reading the word, you know, but I wasn't being taught the word. You know, it's one thing to read it, um, but really not have any uh, historical foundation of what that word is saying or what it means or where it comes from. Um, and I always use the phrase, uh, Jesus is Lord. When I saw that, I'm like, what in the world does that mean? I don't even, I don't even know what that is, you know, but it wasn't until I actually came to the bridge that I was able to understand how to uh, divide the two. You know, Jesus is king. You know, he is king of all. Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah. Everybody would always say, Jesus Christ, that's his name. No, Jesus, the Messiah, the king, the prince of peace, the comforter. I mean, so, you know, those things now make sense to me. But before, it was just, you know, do the best I can. Do the best I can and keep it moving, you know. Um, you know, you would, did I know anything about coming to the foot of the cross and praying for myself or having somebody pray for me? No, I didn't know anything about that. Um, did I know that I could uh, maybe sit down with a pastor or an elder and, and discuss things that were private and it be kept private? No, I didn't trust no preacher. 
You know me? I, I, I would go to the, I mean, you know, I didn't trust no preacher. I, I just didn't. I didn't, you know, I didn't trust nobody that went to church. You know, so um, I definitely wasn't going to go to no city of refuge and confess all my sins and say, hey, here I am. Take me in. You know what I mean? Keep me from the enemy, you know, because the girl down the street is catchy chasing me. You know, that wasn't going to happen. You know, so, but now when you are in a position like now and you're talking to people, you know, I can almost guarantee that when you're talking to someone who is in a position that you may have been in before you came here, you are more open and more apt to listen to their, to their call. And you are more open and apt to listen and to offer them help. And you are probably just itching that opportunity to share Jesus and his love and, and him as your savior. And you can have this too. That, that's, the ref, that's the refuge. Uh, we're going to talk about next week, you know, um, how I think it was in Matthew, okay, where Jesus is in a house and there are so many people around that they had to, they knocked the roof off so they could lower the man down in to the house. Everybody know that story, right? Well, what was the, what's the real deal? There were so many people standing around the house to see Jesus that they blocking, were blocking the way for the man who really need to see him. We don't want to be that person. We definitely don't want to stand in the way of somebody coming to the city of refuge or coming to Christ. We want to lead them in. Like we talked about earlier, about that path um, being clear. What's that passage? You shall prepare roads for yourself and divide them into three parts, the territory of your land, which the Lord your God has given you to inherit, that any, that any manslayer may flee there. You ever heard that term, run for your life? You've heard it, right? Run for your life. That's what that means. It means that the road should be clear, and it should not hinder the man who is fleeing for his life to be able to run. He's running for his life. A clear path. What would happen if the road is blocked or there's a bunch of stumbling blocks and it's not clear the way? The avenger would eventually catch him because the man would probably break his ankle and he'd catch him and kill him. Clear the road. Get out of the way. Direct him to Jesus. 